we have a very limited and outdated view of leadership today. We equate leadership with a big title and position. If we continue to take this view, equality in leadership will never be achieved in our lifetimes today. <clears throat> Let me give you an example of a woman who practices the new model of leadership, Seema. Seema lives in an urban slum, what we call in my local language, a kachi abadi, in my hometown, Lahore, in Pakistan. I met Seema when I was working in microfinance and building an organization that reached out to 300,000 women from low-income households. Seema had never held a job ever in her life. Then, one day, her husband died suddenly. She had two little girls. Her husband's family did not give her the share in the family business. Seema had no other source of income. She said, when you are poor, no one wants to associate with you. Then one day, she saw a young woman, half her age, walking in her neighborhood, going door to door. Seema was intrigued. She admired the courage of this young woman. So she reached out to her, asking her, what are you doing? This young woman was a staff from our foundation. She shared with Seema about the microfinance facility and capacity building initiatives for women like her. Seema gathered her courage and took a small loan. And she started selling biscuits on a cot outside her home. Every year, she repaid her loan and took another loan, which she invested back in her business. In six years, she built a shop in her home. And she proudly told me that now she even had a refrigerator. Seema was so excited about her progress that she wanted me to see her shop. We walked in the neighborhood and went to her home. This is my refrigerator. And see all the goodies that I sell in the community. Seema had even started a second business, selling cloth along with two other women, two women in the community during festivals and wedding celebrations. Her two kids went to school. She advocated for other families to send their kids to school. She inspired and motivated other under underprivileged women in her community to believe in themselves. Seema is a change agent, no longer a victim. So what can we learn as women and men from Seema's story. There are three lessons that I would like to highlight. One, Seema did not have a title or a position, yet she was willing to step into the unknown and exercise leadership, first on behalf of her family and then for the community. As women and we need to recognize that the opportunity to exercise leadership comes to us every day in different shapes and forms. You do not need to wait to get that big role to start exercising leadership. Leadership today is associated with the CEO of a company, the head of government, the head of a family. Often, it is associated with a man, sometimes a woman. But you can deploy yourself today on the purposes that you care about. It could start by something as simple as asking a question. A question that gets people to address their tough choices that they may be avoiding. It can even be a courageous conversation on your family dining table. Second, 
Seema had a long-term perspective of her life. She faced adversity, but what did she do? She set up a new enterprise. We need to be prepared that life will bring disappointments and ups and downs. How can you build the stomach to stay in the game? To take that long-term view of your life, of your career, and have that stomach for uncertainty. Number three, Seema did not do it alone. She built partners, allies, men, women, and children who she enrolled in her success and eventually in their own success. So as women, we need to build partners, allies, confidants, those who will champion us and support us in our journey. Invest in these enduring, meaningful relationships now. Like Seema, there are women in different geographies, Kenya, Bolivia, Philippines, who are working at a grassroots level, bringing change in their own families and their communities. These women do not have a formal title or position but they have become change agents. They are change agents. The message from Seema's life is as relevant for women in urban slums of Lahore, Pakistan, as it is for highly educated women in New York City. Let me share with you some very fascinating research, Athena Doctrine. The Athena Doctrine is based on individual interviews with 64,000 people across 13 nations. The Athena Doctrine maps the qualities that will be essential for success in the 21st century. And guess what? The research reveals that both men and women alike find significant value in qualities that are associated with women. Empathy, collaboration, sharing, communication. It turns out, as women, we have the essential qualities for leadership. These are the qualities that are also necessary for solving the complex problems that we face today in the world. Poverty, inequality. Lean in, which brings a wonderful and much needed focus on women and leadership, also assumes that change happens with a formal title. Leadership is associated with attaining and being part of formal power structures. I'm a big fan of lean in, but this is one route to exercising leadership. We all know the numbers. We do not have sufficient women today in formal positions of authority. Only 14 heads of government are women. Less than 15% of Fortune 500 boards include women. And only 5% CEOs of these companies are women. And this is not changing fast enough despite affirmative action like quotas for boards. And therefore, I believe we need to change the way we view women and leadership without really having that title or position. Anyone can be that change agent. This is the new paradigm that we need to live and breathe. And let me now share a much more personal journey my own story with you. I grew up in Pakistan. I went to the US for the first time for my undergrad. I came back because I wanted to do something for the country and work in development. I worked as a consultant for the World Bank, but saw the work was not really making difference. And I joined a startup, Kush Foundation, becoming part of their founding team to scale and bring microfinance services in the country to rural and urban Pakistan, focusing on women. 
I did not know I was becoming an entrepreneur, let alone a social entrepreneur. I did not have a big title, but I was passionate about an idea. We worked hard, collaborated, took initiative, made mistakes, and grew from two small rooms to scale our initiatives and disperse $200 million and employ 2,000 team members. It was an exhilarating journey, and I feel so privileged to be part of this change. Move forward 10 years. I become the CEO. Yes, I got that big title. But guess what? Even when I had the title, I did not fully authorize myself. I did not own my own success. Somewhere deep inside, I doubted myself. It was a difficult experience. I experienced the classic imposter syndrome that women are more vulnerable to. As a result, I did not fully bring all my strengths to the table. And when I sensed that the organization needed to change its business model, I was unable to steer the organization towards change and to be assertive enough in the face of resistance that I experienced. And I did not stay in the game. I quit. Move forward. After my microfinance experience, I went to the Harvard Kennedy School. I went there to make sense of the scars that I was carrying of exercising leadership, to rethink, reinvent, and reflect on my successes and failures. It is there that I discovered that leadership is not tied to a title or a position. That SEMA, in fact, is not just an example of a microfinance success story, but really of a woman who exercised leadership. It's a great leadership case study. At the Kennedy School, I also met my husband. We got married and moved to Dubai. When I came to Dubai, I had to rediscover my purpose and identity. Beyond the role of the new wife, which was precious and dear, and beyond the role as a microfinance CEO that I had left behind. It was not easy. I did not know where to begin. It was messy, uncomfortable, and even chaotic. And that's where I realized how much of my own identity was linked with my work, with my, with my microfinance role. And now that I did not have it, there was a sense of loss and grief. Lesson, don't get too attached to that role. Expand your bandwidth and be willing to reinvent yourself and step into uncertainty, even though it feels uncomfortable and messy. I then started with small experiments. One Skype call led to me having a great conversation around leadership, then to participating in a leadership conference where I met colleagues who I could call my community. Most importantly, I met two other women who became business partners and collaborators. Together, we created Circle, an enterprise that is collaborating to provide women with opportunities to exercise leadership and to bring innovation in this space. We started what we call a listening tour exploring our own aspirations and challenges as women, and inviting other men and women 
in this conversation to share their struggles and triumphs in exercising leadership. What can men and women learn from each other? Where do women feel stuck in particular? As we go forward today, I'd like you to think about four things that you can start doing, four actions that you, the women in the audience and the men can do to create a more inclusive, equitable and prosperous world where you can exercise personal leadership. One, don't wait for that big role and big title. Start exercising leadership now about a purpose that you care about deeply. It could begin by something as simple as asking a question, a courageous conversation. Number two, build the stomach to stay in the game. Have that long-term perspective, the resilience to face the grit uh, to have that grit and to face the ups and downs of life. Number three, don't do it alone. Enroll others in your success, men and women, who become your champions. Number four, be willing to take small risks and experiment so that you can again expand and discover sides of you that you never even felt you had and come up with new ways, new ways to invent yourself and expand your role. I believe that women globally can be change agents. They can be leaders, not of tomorrow, but today. And they can create change and transform themselves their families, their communities, companies, and countries. Thank you. <laughs>